Ronnie, why are you snitching on all of Chicago right now? Like, why? is Sharana from Pay or Wait and today I am going to be reviewing The Shy episode 10 Ease on Down the Road and where has the time gone? It's been 10 weeks already and we're at the season finale of season one of The Shy and I'm sad like I don't know what I'm gonna do with my Sundays going forward and what I'm gonna do without Papa just making me feel so good about today's youth and knowing that they have someone like Papa to look up to okay and so you know what I didn't think that uh this season finale was as like shocking with like these crazy revelations um as i thought it was going to be but they do make sure that they tie up a lot of loose ends while still leaving us questions going into season two and so they get right into it you know the whole uh basis of the season has been surrounding jason's death coogie's death who actually killed Jason, who killed Kugi? We knew, well, we didn't know about Jason, but they go ahead and solve that for us in the beginning of the episode. And so we see that Trice gets delivered to Q by Reggie and Jake. And so we see that Jason was just in the wrong place at the wrong time, which is just so unfortunate that this young man's life was ruined because he was literally just going on a like a cravings run for his girlfriend who was pregnant because she wanted ice cream. So he went to go get her ice cream. And as he's walking back, he sees Trice and Detective Wallace and they are doing their whole little gun thing. And so when Trice sees Jason and he sees that he kind of saw what was going on, we see that Jason, we see that Trice actually ends up being the one who shoots um, Jason. And then we see later in the episode that it's revealed that Detective Wallace told Trice to leave and that he would take care of it. And we see that the detective actually basically suffocates Jason with his shoe. And so that's how Jason died. So both Detective Wallace and Trice had something to do with it, which I thought both of them had something to do with his death and so you see as q is questioning trice he reveals to trice that hey that was my son and so trice looking like damn like that's why you've been going so hard all season because it was your son and so he knew that the end was there for him and you know q told him that he wouldn't be the one to kill him but then he gives the gun to reggie after he gets done questioning uh tries to get all of the answers to who all was involved with his son's murder and so we see reggie goes and kills uh, Trice and so therefore Reggie is placed into power to take over for Trice by Q and everyone's pretty much okay with it and life moves on I guess it's kind of just like okay we know what type of life that we're living we know that tomorrow is never promised to anybody so we just gotta keep it moving and making sure that we're getting our coins so you know Q then makes sure that he goes and takes care of uh, the detective and I was just like damn Q like I mean, I know you bad and all, but you're gonna kill an officer like this, like whether or not he was dirty. But I guess I still wanted to see more satisfaction of his crookedness being exposed. And I don't know if that's gonna be a storyline for Detective Cruz, who is given the case to solve who murdered uh, Detective Wallace and if he's going to uncover the conspiracy or that the police department would even allow him to truly uncover the conspiracy that this detective was corrupt and was partnering with, you know, people with bad people to basically put black market guns out on the streets of Chicago. So I just felt a certain type of way that, yeah, it was fine that Q killed Wallace, but I really wanted to see real justice because it's kind of just like no one's still going to know that the cops are dirt. Well, we know the cops are dirty in this town, but no one's going to see like, hey, th this is who really has something to do with Jason's death. And so it also leads me to another issue with Q because like he kind of goes to Tracy at the end. It was like, hey, it's taken care of. And then Tracy just silent. And it was just like, so are are you not going to apologize or you're not going to acknowledge that you basically raped her when she was a teenager? like I kind of wanted to see some resolution with that because you guys kind of gave it to us last week and you told us like hey he raped her when she was young and based off of something that her stepfather did but like we didn't see her try to have closure with her rapist or him to apologize or anything it was kind of just like okay we told you that last week but we're not going to do anything to kind of tie all of that up and so I don't want to say that that's redemption for Q being that he took care of who killed his son because he committed a huge crime that he can't take back, but he could at least try to make it right 
with Tracy. And then also too, going into Tracy, I want to know now, like, are we going to explore her relationship with Brandon's mom, Cookie's mom? Because she has to feel some type of guilt because at the end of the day, you told Ronnie like to go ahead and take care of this. And he killed this kid who had nothing to do with your son's death. And it's just like, are we not going to go back to that or see is Tracy even has she even had time to feel guilt outside of dealing with her grief for the death of her son? So I hope that that's something that they explore for next season because I just want to see more. I want to see more with her storyline. I want to see more with Brandon's mom's storyline. I really feel like the women of the shy need to get more of their storylines fleshed out. I need them to have more to do in the season to kind of just show like just what women deal with, you know, and I feel like they're kind of like background characters as to all of the men or what they have going on in the episode. And I feel like they have interesting things that are happening with them that audiences would like to explore and like to learn more about. So let's get into my face, the kids. Okay. I love these kids. Papa, Kevin, they just, they, they just so adorable. Okay. And so you see that finally they get to do their play. Papa, like, he he pulled out all the stops. He was dabbing and doing all of that. He he had it going on, okay, Papa? And so, you know, they the teacher, you see the teacher asked at the beginning of the episode, like, hey, what's going on with Jake? Were you able to bring him back? And then Papa was like, no, he decided to pursue, pursue other opportunities within the family business. And then the teacher's like, oh, I should go talk to him. And they're like, actually, no, you probably shouldn't. And I was like, yeah, sir, you know what his brother does. Like, it ain't that deep. I know you want to say the kids. But I just don't think you should be going to pay visits to Reggie right now because that's just too much. And so you see in the course of this episode, the beginning that Jake finally fully commits to following into his brother's footsteps. And it's like I still don't like Reggie, but I understand that Reggie didn't have the perfect models for himself because they said his mom went away. And they said the dad is in prison. So it's, he just had to figure out what he had to do to make sure that him and his brother were taken care of. But I still take issue with Reggie not wanting more for his little brother Jake and kind of bringing him into this lifestyle where you know there's only you end up in jail or you end up dead. Like those are your only two options. So I just want him to want more for his brother, you see Jake tells him like, hey, I just don't know if school is right for me. I think I'm gonna just go follow my brother Jake. And then Kevin's just like, man, I can't let you do that. Like, I can't get down with that. Like, it's basically kind of like, hey, we just can't be friends if that's the lifestyle that you're going to live. But I like how Papa gave him the little stone, the cross that he made for him. And, you know, he gave him a hug, like, you know, kind of like, I'm still here for you. And Jake is like, hey, if you want to hang out, hit me up. You got my line, hit my line up. You know, it, it's all was good. But Lord, please, y'all bet not let anything happen to Papa. If something happened to Papa, if Papa end up dead in any of these seasons, I'm boycotting. OK, I'm going to start riots like it's going to be some issues. OK, so y'all bet not let anything happen to Papa, but I'm happy that they're di kind of distancing themselves away from Jake because I think they know if they continue to hang out with Jake sooner or later, they're going to get caught up into whatever mess that Jake and his older brother has going on. And so that's pretty much all that happened. Like with the kids, we're going to get into Ronnie snitching and how that led to Kevin getting drawn into some stuff that he shouldn't have been put into. But we're going to get on Brandon. So Brandon is still having issues with Jerrica because he's narrowed down that whoever Jerrica smashed, she works with them. And he still feels a certain type of way about it. And she's just like, well, you smashing your boss, like, and had that whole scenario not happen, you wouldn't have quit. So you would have been working with her and I would have been okay with it. So it's kind of just like them double standards in relationships. Like, why are you so threatened? And I think it's because Brandon feels, has always felt like Jerrica shouldn't be with someone like him because she's just lived a different life and she has different opportunities than what he was given. And so I just need him to really just understand she want to stay with him. She wants to be with him. She a down ass chick. Like she gave you money to start your truck. Like just do what you, you know, just, just make her happy and then build yourself up. Okay. So you can feel like you're on the same level or you're contributing the same amount that she is into the relationship. Now, during the course of uh, them all being together and they're trying to go through the motions of selling the house, Brandon gets a phone call where they let them know that the person who shot Coogie actually turned himself in. They have him in custody. And so we see that Ronnie decides to do the right thing and to turn himself in. But in the course of this fool turning himself in, this fool want to snitch on the whole world. Like at the end of the day, Ronnie, 
you killed Kogi. We know that. That's all you needed to say. Now, you bringing other people in, like, where you went and got the gun. Then you bringing up, like, that Kevin saw him, saw you shoot Kogi. And so it's like, Brandon told you, look, I'm not going to do nothing to you, but keep Kevin out of it. Just keep this kid out of it because... He, once again, in the wrong place at the wrong time, and he saw some stuff that he wasn't supposed to see. And you see Detective Cruz go to Kevin's mom's house and like, hey, I need to bring Kevin in for questioning because he witnessed a murder. So it's just like, just when Kevin's distancing himself away from Jake and trying to get back into just being a kid, Ronnie old bitch ass, get him pulling into some other stuff to where now he has to testify that he saw Ronnie shoot Kugi and then told nobody about it. So I just felt like, Ronnie, like when I'm just coming to terms with you, like deciding not to look so raggedy, you know, when you go into prison and you're doing the right thing, you turn yourself in, then you got to snitch on everybody. Like, that's not okay, Ronnie. I'm not cool with that at all. And so... We also see that Reggie now being the man in charge, kind of what I said last week when the two dudes saw that Brandon had this truck, of course we knew that Reggie was going to cash in his favor. The block is too hot. They can't be doing what they were doing before. So basically they're going to use the taco business as a front for them to still sell the guns, drugs, whatever they sell in these days now that the whole you know, conspiracy with Wallace and Trice is over. So it's just like, once again, Brandon is just at another crossroads because we know he got to pay Jerrica back. You see that after his mom uh, realizes that they caught the guy and he's going to be on trial, she wants to stay and be a part of it to make sure that, you know, there is justice for her child so she's not selling the house anymore. So basically, we know Brandon going to be caught up in this and Jerrica's not going to be okay with that. So I'm sure that's something that we're going to explore going into season two. So it was a lot of loose ends that were tied up. To me, this wasn't as eventful of a season finale as I expected it to be, especially with how many revelations were given in the past two episodes of The Shy. But it still makes me um, excited to see what they have in store. Are we going to be going through the trial? We're we'll seeing what happened with Reggie and Brandon with this new business that he had. And of course, seeing the kids. So I think overall, it was a pretty good season. It was a good first season. I definitely need my hour-long episodes. Y'all not going to keep doing these 40, 45-minute, 47-minute episodes. It says for one hour, so I need my full 60 minutes, okay? So for season two, y'all told us, they already said on Twitter, they're going to be giving us longer episodes, so I'm going to hold you guys to that. But also, please make sure that you flesh out the female storylines in the shy because I feel like the women need to be front and center as well. But... Those are my thoughts on the season finale. I'm so sad. I'm going to miss you guys so much. But just make sure you stay tuned. I'll still be recapping Black Lightning. And I'll be recapping um, Atlanta for my TV show reviews. And also make sure you always tune into the movie reviews that I have. But as always, my name is Sharonda from Pay or Wait. And today, like, those are my thoughts. And hopefully, if you like what you saw today, make sure you share this video with your friends. Like, subscribe to my channel. Tell your friends to subscribe to my channel. And I will see you soon.